Recorded live at Esto in Columbus, Ohio, this is Brand USA Talks Travel. Get ready to take mental notes from the top minds and creative thinkers who are driving innovation in destination marketing, content, research, public relations, policy, and more. Now here's your host, Mark Lapidus. This is quite an accolade that I read. Columbus has been called a hidden gem in plain sight by Forbes magazine. How did that happen? And tell me about the reaction that followed. Well, it uh, happened because we have a tremendous PR team. They are always working to bring in travel writers from around the country to showcase the tremendous community that we have. So that happened naturally, which I'm very proud of. Obviously, we want it to keep happening and happening much more often. But I would say we were uh, very, very honored to get that designation. We sent that around to everybody, all of our stakeholders, and everybody was excited and rallied around it. But the first thing we looked at is how do we get rid of the head and just be a gem? (laughs) I like that. My guest today is Brian Ross, CEO of Experience Columbus. He also serves as a board member of the Franklin County Convention Facilities Authority. Brian previously held roles at Hyatt. It must be fun playing host at Esto. How did it feel to be selected as a host city? And I'm sure others would really appreciate hearing how that process works. If you can kind of take us behind the curtain. First, when we uh, found out we were selected, it was a true honor because when we look at doing any event and particularly the high profile events, it is a community effort. And you'll hear me talk about this probably many times. We have tremendous support from our stakeholders. And those stakeholders are obviously our travel economy partners, our elected leaders, the corporate community. And they really lean in for us to put our best foot forward because they have seen over the years, as we've been fortunate to win some of these big events, whether it's sporting events, trade shows, conventions, meetings, they've seen the impact. And through that, that impact. They've built the two Hilton hotels here. They are publicly funded hotels. So they're putting their money where their mouth is. And what I will share with you as we talk a little bit later, they've also invested in the community because if people don't want to live here, they sure as heck don't want to visit here. (laughs) So how does the selection process work at Esther? Can you tell me any of that? Yeah, it is something we spent many years putting together what our proposal would be. You know, just being uh, very transparent, it took us a while to evolve as a community for some of these big events. ESTO's one, ASAE was one, PCMA was one, U.S. Conference of Mayors. So for us to truly embark on these endeavors with these high-profile events, and we'll stay with ESTO, it took time for our community to really catch up to what we needed to feel comfortable and confident with when you're bringing these professionals from around the country. And as we know, they are the toughest critics on communities. So it took many years. But, you know, we bid up against other communities and we were able to uh, win for this year and couldn't be more excited. So my feet are telling me already that this convention center is huge. It's got to be one of the biggest in the country, right? Uh, It's not, but it's a very uh, spacious convention center for our community. It's about 1.8 million square feet of total space. We have 370,000 contiguous space for exhibit space. So when you look at a lot of the cities that we compete against in the Midwest, particularly, it's the fourth largest building. The biggest thing I will say about this, uh, you know, the architecture is either love it or hate it. Uh, It's true everywhere. It is, and there's no happy medium. But what I can say, whenever we have meeting professionals come in, and Esto is one of them, they can't speak enough about how efficient the building is because you have all your meeting space on one side of the building, and then you walk across the hall, and you have all the exhibit space. You don't have to take elevators, escalators, anything like that that to get into the exhibit space. It's on one floor. It's easy load in, load out. That sounds like an elevator pitch to me. Yes. <laughs> well, since we're talking about the convention center, I might as well ask you about MICE. How involved is your DMO in MICE? Yes, with MICE, our chief sales officer and our chief marketing and technology innovation officer work very closely together to make sure that we are communicating all of the amenities and advantages of choosing Columbus with the meetings incentive side of things. So, you know, as a matter of fact, we have our team right now in uh, Cleveland for ASAE. We have two people doing sales calls out on the West Coast. So again, really focusing on the meetings industry. You started in the hotels, Brian, and then moved into the destination space. What advice do you have for younger folks that are just entering the tourism and travel space? I would say find your passion. 
It is an industry that is very rewarding from my perspective, but you do have to be passionate about it. It is an ever-changing industry. You know, when I first started, there wasn't a lot of change, but nowadays, particularly with the different formats of the way people are gaining their content, just to be very passionate, innovative, and be willing to take risks. It's been a banner year for sports here in Columbus. A lot of events from the U.S. Figure Skating Championships to the MLS All-Star Game. And I understand you've been calling this the summer of soccer in Columbus, hosting a lot of high-profile matches. I saw that Manchester City versus Chelsea was at Ohio Stadium. How do these events impact tourism and your international profile? It's got to be big. It is. First of all, we have, in my opinion, the absolute best sports commission in the country. Our sports commission is led by Linda Logan, who is the executive director, who actually created the sports commission here in Columbus about 20 years ago. I think your friend in Cleveland, by the way, is going to argue with you. But. I know. He can. <laughs> I love David, but no. You know, one of the things that she's been able to do is really amplify and get people in the community to support the growth of sport. And not only that, particularly when you look at the soccer, one of the things we're very, very proud of is the culture of our community. And there is nothing more that shows how welcoming, inclusive, diverse our community is and the quality of life that we provide to all than having those international soccer matches that bring people from around the world to Columbus and understand the importance of that, but also understand what we have to offer in the uh, sporting community. It's often said that success breeds success. Are you seeing that? We are. It was interesting. And when we start talking about sort of the catalyst to where the community has really gone from a event standpoint, uh, meetings, conventions, and also sports, it comes back to an initiative and a process we went through that we didn't win. We lost. But through that loss, we really leaned in and made a positive change in the community. And that started with our former mayor, Mayor Coleman, Michael Coleman, came back from uh, Charlotte for the DNC and came back and said, we need to get one of the political conventions to Columbus. And this was back in 2010, I think, 2011, and really rallied the community. And all of us sitting in this room when he asked for that, we're like, yeah, this isn't going to happen. Why are we doing this? Well, as we went through the process, everybody understood we can do this. Of course, we had some shortcomings, but we really invested in the community to provide that experience, those accommodations, those amenities that we needed. And that really is what catapulted us forward. So let's switch to amenities like food. Everybody loves food. And I noticed that you've got Jenny Britton as a local superstar here. Tell me about Jenny's ice cream. Jenny's ice cream is truly unique. They have a chief innovation officer, which I would love to have that job. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Some of the flavors they talk about, you're sort of like, ooh, how does that go together? And then when you taste it, you're like, uh, yeah, I'll have the whole pint. Jenny's uh, from Columbus, started here. Actually, her first endeavor to go into the brick and mortar did not work out, but she obviously never gave up. She was based right here in the North Market, right across the street, and came back, was really, really intentional in how she was creating a distinct offering and flavor, but built it around culture. And she's just blown up. And we love when we go around the country, whether it's telling the story as a community, whether we're doing sales calls for meetings, events, whatever it may be, there are Jenny's. And that's one of the things we do is take our potential partners to Jenny's and they love it. It's awesome. She must be a great speaker too, because she's keynoting here at Esto. She is a very good speaker. I yeah, yes. can't wait to hear her. Columbus hosts one of the largest pride celebrations in the Midwest. What's your involvement with that? First, from a marketing, PR, social media standpoint, we amplify the message that Stonewall Columbus, who puts on the Pride events, provides. And I would say that Denzel Porteous, who is the executive director, he's on our Experience Columbus board, and we help them hand in glove in whatever their needs are to tell the story. Now, it is to a point where it is so large, you may think, well, you don't need to tell the story. Well, we're always looking at growing it. And we're excited because, you know, within Columbus... I talk about it, but we also, uh, you know, walk the walk. And that is just being a very diverse and opening community. You know, we participate in a parade. I think over 700,000 people came in for the parade. It goes right down High Street, which is the main street in uh, Columbus into the short north. And it is a huge celebration. And it's part of a weekend celebration. So not only does it mean a lot from a financial standpoint,
social standpoint, but from a cultural standpoint and from an identity standpoint of a community that we're very proud of. Brian, before we go, I really enjoy promoting job opportunities in the tourism industry. And I noticed on your website, you've got a few things open at Experience Columbus. So can you tell me about a couple of those for folks that might be interested? Yes, uh, we do and would love to continue to grow our team. We have a position that we've just added that's a uh, marketing specialist. And this person, uh, as we talk about enhancing our storytelling, this person works very closely with our convention sales team to put together marketing opportunities. So that people understand how we can help them create additional attendance when they come to Columbus. So that was one of them. We have a sales coordinator position, which typically starts with all the service, contracting, information gathering, but then as they work through this and become comfortable with the industry as a whole, typically come in to be a sales manager is the path. So that position's open. And then we also have a destination specialist position open. So those people are the ones who help showcase the community in the different ways we present memorable experiences and some of the innovative facilities that we have. What kind of things do you look for in job candidates? Again, passion, just the overall understanding and how they relate to different situations in individuals. That's one of the things in this industry. You're always going to have something that goes wrong. I don't care whom you're working with or how many times you do it. There's always certain things that break down. And the ability to address that and right whatever that misstep was is really, really important. So those people that can think on their feet, that can adapt to certain situations, obviously we want personality, but you know, not everything's the end of the world. We all make mistakes every day. And I'm right at the front of the line. <laughs> Me too. I'm right behind you. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, Brian. I assume all those job openings are on experiencecolumbus.com, right? They are. It's been great speaking with you. Obviously a huge fan of Brand USA. Chris has done a great job. And now with Fred coming in, I know that he'll build upon the tremendous success that you've had. But we appreciate our partnership with you and do look forward to how we can continue to expand into a more of an international known community. Thank you. It's certainly our pleasure. Ours as well. Thank you. And that's it for today for Brand USA Talks Travel live from Esto in Columbus, Ohio. Lots more episodes coming. I'm Mark Lapidus. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this Live from Esto episode, please share it with your friends in the travel industry. Production and music by Asher Mirovich, media producer, Thonze Karaoke, with assistance from Casey D'Ambra, engineering, Brian Watkins, Kat Pomer, and Antonio Tyler, art by Mimi Jung. Special thanks to Alexis Adelson, Bill Dickison, Peter Dodge, and Colleen Mangone. More Live from Esto episodes coming soon. Safe travels.